do 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 Hey, check one, check two, it's G from the Academy. It's an interesting world, isn't it? How can you possibly be bored? Actually, I, I can tell you how, because boredom is an instant uh, speech, talk, trip over your words, fall down, stand up again. Speech is an internal, not speech, what? Boredom, that's it. Keep taking the pills, you'll be fine. Thank you. What is he talking about? Boredom. Boredom is an internal state caused by a lack of freedom. Let me repeat that again for the heart of thinking. Boredom is an internal state caused by a lack of freedom. You are not allowed either internally or externally to do the things that you need to do for yourself to have the experiences you need to have. So, therefore, you are limited and restricted. Um, because the truth is that we're all unlimited. Let's take the classic example of boredom, where the kid says to the parent, Mom, I'm bored. Dad, I'm bored, usually followed by there's nothing to do in a world with infinite possibilities. It's the sense that you're limited in some way. Now, it might be real or it might be unreal. Yeah, it might be real in the sense that people are actually limiting your actions or it might be, um, take that example, like that example might be in a classical school, right, where you have to do things that you don't want to do. Or it might be unreal that there are possibilities out there, but you are maybe too afraid to explore all of those ideas and possibilities. Um, and we often limit ourselves. You know, I had a really short conversation with a gentleman yesterday. And he pointed out that... Uh, well, well let's, let, let, let's rewind the story. So I got up yesterday and it was overcast and cloudy and wet and windy and rainy. And I was thinking I want to go out, but I'm not sure like what I'm going to do if I, if I go out because you're just going to get cold and wet, right? And, and so I thought about this and I thought, well, I'm going to check out Facebook and see what people are... Uh, selling and um, so I hopped onto Facebook and um, there was somebody locally selling a surfboard now and here's another point right I, I posted online that I bought a surfboard yesterday um, and I'll, I'll get right to the whole story about the surfboard but um, and, and people are confused right they're like but the shops are all closed everything shut shut down we're in we're in lockdown don't you understand mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, um, you know, people policing the people, right, which is just a human disaster because everybody projects what they think is good and right onto other people, um, which is why we need the police and we should defund and unfund the police because every now and then you're going to want to call them because you want somebody to assist with law and order and uh, they're the best until we get something better and they should reflect the wishes of the people in a so-called democracy um, which is a tangent but um, what's the point all right so um, oh yeah people are confused that oh, you but, but the sports shops are closed you know well first of all you could order it from a warehouse you could order it through eBay or, or Amazon and it can come within 48 hours and so you could do it that way but um, what happens when the government's, when government shuts things down is things move 
into the, the second economy, which is the underground economy. When government says you can't do this legally, um, or just says you can't do this, or makes people think that they can't do it, then what happens is everybody switches to the black market or the black economy, which is part of <laughs> the madness and, and craziness of the world, because that's part of what Facebook marketplace actually is, right? It, it, it's it's an economy of trade in used and secondhand goods, essentially that uh, that is not taxed. And question is, should it be taxed? Well, I I don't think that um, any open trade between people who want to trade should be taxed because why should I give a certain percentage of my work to another person? I I just think it's it, it's wrong. Um, Yes, but you need this to fund the system. Well, yeah, it, I wouldn't mind if the system spent money on things that I thought were important, but um, it doesn't. Therefore, I think that, that individuals benefit from having more of their own income rather than less. Well, just noticed that my my little... Um, what do you call these things around a hoodie that, that hang down? at the front. What do you call those, those two stringy things there? What was it? They got a name? Taggles, toggles, noggles. What, 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 what are they even for? Right? I just noticed one of them was tucked in in the video. Well, what are they for? What do you, what do you do? You, do, you, do you tie them up? What do you, what do you do with What do you do with them? Bizarre. Okay. Um, anyway, um, What's the point? Underground economies. Yeah. So, um, so sh should it be taxed? Um, <clears throat> probably not. Um, it's not bad for people to have more of their own income, unless you're government. Um, government doesn't produce, government only consumes. That's why all government economies falter at the end of the day and government makes stupid decisions that destroys the lives of people and jobs and the GDP in Britain just goes straight down the, the sharpest drop ever, which is a punishment for Britain being an independent country, which is, um, which it was and now no longer is, as it's had to borrow so much money from banks and, um, hey, it's invisible slavery, but it's slavery just the same because you're, you're not, you're not selling your generation, you're selling the future generations down the river, right? Hmm. But people can't see into tomorrow. They can't see the, the knock-on effect. Yeah, and that's why they get fat, because they don't see that eating lots every day makes you bigger, or eating unhealthy food every day makes you bigger, because you need to consume more food in order to get the nutrition from the food. But um, but um, that aside, back to the story about the surfboard, right? So, um, so, so I see it's for sale, have a little chat online, agree to go and have a look at it, and um, talking to the person who's who's selling it, who's giving me this little sales speech about surfboards, and I'm like, yeah, okay, fair enough. And um, and they're saying, yeah, you know, you should uh, you should uh, you should get out and get on the board and you know give it give it a try. And I'm like, well, you know, I, just, I will, but I'm a bit nervous about it. And and he's like, well, you, nobody cares. And it's so true. He said, nobody cares. Nobody cares if you're good or you're bad. No, no, nobody's nobody's interested in what you're doing. If you fall off, nobody really cares. People forget about that stuff instantly. And um, the most important thing is to try to do things, to get out and to try to do things. Um, so, yeah, and great point. You know, sometimes short, succinct conversations have the greatest of, of impacts. Um, and th that's to cut a long story short because it, it was all very complicated in terms of um, actually getting resources. And, oh, and again, the problem again, right, which I, m I mentioned the other day that um, um, if you don't have access to cash, you're screwed, right, in any type of economy. If you don't have access to cash, you're screwed. Because cash is like the, the oil that keeps the engine running, right? Maybe you can have a digital system of, 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 of currencies and that can be the engine of your society. But it, it's those 
microtransactions, those cash microtransactions that actually keep things moving, that keeps things rolling, that, that keep, keeps things progressing forward. Um, so it, maybe it's nice to not have to carry around a wallet of coins, but um, cash still matters and it will always matter. Now the flip side of that is that currencies are not all what they're laid out and made out to be. Um, a lot of the time it is just paper. It's just paper that you believe has value. But if you believe that that paper, say, represents a contract of some kind and that you, you trust in it, which is there's a lot of trust involved in money, um, then uh, fair enough, right? Look, if it helps, it helps. If it works, it works. Don't don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. Um, so there we go. Live where you are. Use use what you have. Hey, if you're watching the video, I I, I dug out the old uh, Xbox 360 drum kit here. Uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting how some things don't get, don't really manage to get upgraded. You know, sometimes classic is, 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 is classic and the older, if you're into music and having a little bit of fun, then your, um, your Xbox 360 digital drum kit gives you um, a lot of, a lot of opportunities. Also a great chance to connect with the kids and give them a sort of safe experience of, of music without uh, terrorizing your neighbors by having a full drum kit um, in your flat, which is just another level of insanity, which would be normal in the modern world, I guess. Hey, check what's trending on Twitter. Look, I did, it, they, they push stuff to the top. It's all propaganda one way or another, however you cut it. But what did I tell you last week? What did I say last week? I said that the next thing that's coming is attacks on infrastructure. Next thing that's coming is attacks on infrastructure. So, yay, US protests, interstate blocked, and restaurants set on fire. Um, because of the death of one person. It's funny how people were killed and murdered constantly for the last hundred years across the board. Um, city to city, state to state. Um, funny, funny, funny how it didn't matter before and now suddenly it matters. You know, there's, there's 20, 30, 40 um, shootings in places like Chicago every weekend. Uh, funny how that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it doesn't fit in to the agenda. Like when a black man shoots a white man, it's not on the news because it doesn't fit into the agenda. And now they can't mention the race or ethnicity because I was looking at some crime reports recently. And look, I'm not I'm not saying that any crime on, on anybody is good. It's all bad. It's all wrong. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm looking at police reports and they're saying, oh, uh, now that uh, they're looking for somebody. They're saying, uh, looking for a male, uh, five foot seven inches tall, and <laughs> they don't say what their race or, or, or color is, which would also obviously help identify them. So that's just another piece of insanity in the puzzle. So yeah, well done guys. Go ahead, defund the police. Have a um, have have community patrols of which are just going to fall apart because you're just going to end up with gangland insanity, which is the plan. Yeah, the plan is to get get the um, communities fighting with each other and just have complete chaos and disorder and then bring in foreign control in order to organize and to, to shut everything down. Of course, it'll look like the foreign control has worked because they'll just pay people off. Right, they just pay people off to create this illusion of success. Um, you know what success is? Success is just letting people be. And people wouldn't even be rioting if it wasn't for the media. The media are almost entirely responsible for this, taking stories, amplifying them out of all proportion, 
making it seem like someone you've never met, have never seen, have never known, has some value in your life. Right now, now, to a certain extent, you can have someone who can who can have an effect. Say the people creating the laws have an effect on everybody's life, right? But allowing the media to amplify one event to affect the lives of everybody, when if the media didn't amplify it, it wouldn't affect anybody's life, right? Is insanity. Okay, let's ride over here because something happened over there. Or let's ride in this country because something happened in that country. Yeah. And let, let's use our isms to um, to send out the clowns onto the streets to destroy their own neighborhoods. Yep. What an insane, what an insane world we live in. Right. Enough about that. Um. Shall we check out the, the, the news stories? Um, shall we check out what's been going down? Yeah, look, here's a story. Um, here's a post from, uh, surprisingly, from msn.com. <laughs> Funny how they seem to play for both sides. Uh, seven long-term side effects of wearing face masks. Look, you shouldn't be wearing a face mask unless you absolutely need it for your work. Say you're a doctor working in a theater or say you're in some dusty environment or like in some factory where there's small pieces of metal particles in the air or something like that, right? You'd, then you want to stop breathing in that, that rubbish. But the moment you're out of that space, you want to take off the mask because if it was healthy to wear masks, we would all have been wearing masks from the beginning of time, wouldn't we? Really, really, that's that's the way that it works. Anyway, um, let me give you seven quick reasons why you shouldn't wear a mask. And um, what I recommend is that people people find a decent version of this on, on the internet. Go to Google Images and or go to Google and type in uh, reasons for not wearing a face mask and then click Images. And people have got these like printed out little flyers that uh, you can you can print out and keep it in your pocket and hand it out to people if you see them wearing them or, you know, put them up in legal public spaces where you can share information because, you know, it, it's health, right? It's health. Health is wealth. Um, so some of the problems that people can have. Um, okay. So uh, number one, shortness of breath and lightheadedness. Um, Activities that result in the expulsion of air, such as talking, yelling, singing, and exercise can result in the accumulation of carbon dioxide between the face and the, the mask. Yes, don't, don't make your kids wear a mask while they're out on their bikes. Just, just stupid. Stupid. But stupid people are everywhere, right? Um, headaches. Headaches. Long-term wearing of masks can result in pr prolonged and repeated episodes of headaches uh, can be due to stress, stress, or just uh, the, the changes in oxygen levels in the blood. So try to be aware of that. Um, acne spots, uh, rashes, uh, rewearing unwashed, reusable masks, or rewearing disposable masks can lead to the inhalation of dust, pollen, bacteria, and other parts contaminants trapped within the the mask so it leads to the, the you know the face can't breathe the pores get clogged up um, you know you end up with a face basically looking like a teenager so um, we've got the uh, development of chronic dermatitis yep I mentioned skin problems um, so that's obviously something to think about. A weakened immune system due to low oxygen levels in the tissues. This is called hypoxia and um, yeah, scientific investigations have proven that prolonged denial of enough oxygen in the body can cripple the ability of your immune system to tackle infections. There you go. Uh, skin wrinkles, um, another effect of long-term face mask use is patterns of skin wrinkling. Um, <laughs> right. 
hard things to reverse, people, hard things to reverse. The development of chronic respiratory conditions is also possible. A surgical mask, which are made of non-woven fabric. And also you've got to think about how small the bacteria is and think about the spaces within the mask. You know, think about, is it practical? Is it, is it sensible? And think about how often professionals actually change their masks. Hmm? Hmm? Think about, think about that. So, um, just things to consider. Just things to consider. Um, the, the ridiculousness of, as I said, wearing a mask when you're riding your bike or driving a lorry or truck or bus or car, um, or having like four people in your car all wearing masks is just pure in insanity. But then the government is mandating that that you're going to need to wear one, which is going to make you sick, which is just bloody stupid. So um, yes, yes, we've we've entered idiocracy. We are being led by idiots. Um, Telegraph.co.uk reports government has terrorised Britons into believing coronavirus will kill them, says advisor. That's exactly what they've done. Because fear and anxiety is all that the government has to offer anymore. That's all. Anything good is gone. Right, we need to rethink. We need to slow down and consider what what we actually need, what would actually be better for us. The government's coronavirus warnings, war, warnings? <laughs> it is a war on people. Warnings have effectively terrorized Britons into believing that this is not a disease, it is, sorry, that this is, you see, this is, yeah, it's a, it's a Freudian slip, this is a disease that is going to kill you, according to the government. Even though most of those infected will not be hospitalized, most won't even experience any symptoms. So you can have whole factories of people who have the virus, but have no symptoms of illness or sickness. And, it, and still people will want those factories to be closed because there'll still be a spreading infection. What, look, this is how human beings, we've dumbed ourselves down to the point as society where we don't quite remember how human beings are actually supposed to live. We also think that doctors and governments and the police are going to be able to solve all the problems in the world, which doesn't work like that because as has been proven with private organizations and foundations taking over government responsibilities, government can't really do anything for itself. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't have some form of authority, but me personally, I don't like authority very much, but that's just me. Um, most of those infected will not be hospitalized. Professor Robert Dingwall also told Friday's Chopper's Politics podcast, which you can listen to on the player below, blah, 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 that the government should let people come within 1.5 meters of each. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Nice of the government to reduce two meters to 1.5 because it all makes a giant difference. Um, even though the virus can be passed through the... Oh, no, it can't. Oh, yes, it can. According to the study, it can. Oh, no, it can't again. Oh, well, whatever, you know. Tuesday's different from Monday, right? Um, the government should let people come within 1.5 meters of each other inside and outside as part of measures to ease the lockdown. The public authorities face a challenge to manage the British people out of the levels of fear and anxiety they have helped create through their stay at home. Also, um, they're going to have to bring a lot of people back from the dead as well. Um, Protect the NHS, save lives, messaging. Look, look it was all, it, it's all a psychological operation. It's all double think designed to um, melt, melt your brain. The only way through to the other side, the only way to find solutions is to, within yourself, I would say, keep it real and be real. Um, realizing that nobody knows more about you and what you need in your life than you yourself. Ask yourself some important questions. Understand that the essential secret is that it does not pay well to live with secrets. Right? Ask any journalist. It does not pay well to live with secrets in the long term. Yes, you might have a fat check in your bank account for a while, but the last 10 years of your life are going to be misery um, because you haven't learned to judge properly because you haven't been educated because you don't have any 
moral grounding. Because you need judgment with discernment, because judgment without discernment is like a car without wheels. Yeah. And it's all about the actions and how you act and the quality of the actions. You don't get to judge if you don't execute well. For sure, for sure. Right. Um, a lot of people, language, language matters, right? A lot of people are going to say that we need changes, we need to move forward, uh, we need to be progressive, but we don't need to leave behind all of the good things, right? We've sort of, we've sort of grown up, a lot of us in this use once, throw away culture, which, you know, which it hasn't served us well because we've taken what we apply to products and applied it to our lives and that's not cool right it's just not cool um, so we have to be aware and, and careful about progressive behaviors in terms of incremental changes um, Caitlin Bennett pointed out that um, um, certain elements of leftism uh, offended in 2018 and if uh, the left got offended they banned you from social media and then progressively it escalated in 2019 people would try to get you fired from your job if you expressed a non-left opinion on social media I know people that's happened to and uh, a lot of people in sport uh, for example um, and now it's 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 2020, and you know people are doxing each other. They're, they're putting addresses online. They're they're trying to burn people, burn and attack people's cars. You know there was a funny story the other day about um, somebody who followed a whole bunch of protesters into this city in the USA, and they had Trump stickers, and they put Trump stickers on all the protesters' cars, and the protesters burned their own cars because they had Trump stickers on them. I mean. This is not the kind of leadership that we want or need. Um, it's not the kind of society that we should have. Anyway, um, there are ways around it if you want to find it. Right? There's bad shit everywhere, but don't let the rain ruin your day. All possibilities remain possible if you are optimistic and you approach the future with an, with an open mind and an open mindset, right? Um, <clears throat> bad signs, bad signs out there. Minneapolis City Council unanimously passes resolution to replace the police department with a community-led public safety system. Do you know why we had the police in the first place? Do you understand? Look, you might be young, you might be idealistic, you might be liberal in your opinions, but as you get older, you're going to regret that choice as things just fall apart, right? You're going to regret that choice. Um, it, it's like that that really old Ghostbusters slogan, right? Who are you going to call? Yeah. Who are you going to call? Who's going to help you out, right? Um, I'm not a fan of the police. You know, I don't go out waving flags and jump up and down and support them. But I appreciate and respect when they do good things within society, when they help needy people with real problems. Um, I don't think that um, snooping around people's gardens to find out what they're doing in their own gardens is any job that the police should be doing right i don't think um filling in quotas is a job that the police should be doing yeah i think that uh there's a, you know I'll tell you a story um i had an office in in a town um and uh, I can't tell you which town, can I? Can I say which town? Doesn't matter which town, people will be able to work it out, right? So I had an office in the town square. And um, um, you know, what would, what would happen in 
is that, that every now and then, you know, people would, if you've got a business, your door is open, right? Anybody can walk in. That people who haven't had a business don't realize the issue with that. Anybody can walk in, right? People can be drunk, they can be stoned, they can be insane, right? Anybody can walk in. And so, um, I ha and, and I had this office in the square. And what would happen is that the, the, the lower elements of society, would al they always want money for the weekend so they can go out and party with, go where the people go, party where the people party, right? But um, if they are the lower echelons and elements of, of society or, or the really lowest, then they, they don't have money, so they need to get money quickly and they don't plan this in advance. What they do is they realize on Friday afternoon they don't have money for Friday evening. So they go around businesses trying to steal everything they can from the businesses, no joke. Um, they just walk around and see what they can pick up and what they can sell to other people on the street. So if it's not, you know, tied down or fixed on, it disappears. And um, so people, um, I figured there were two people, I think one was a lookout and the other person was like stealing stuff from shops. Somebody ran into my, my, my business and picked up a bag and ran out and you know, you're working, you're thinking about other things. It takes you a second to click and register. Um, that, that something's weird, something's happened, something's gone. And I rushed out of my building looking for this guy who stole a bag. And it was, um, I think it was a client's um, handbag or something. I'm not sure it was a handbag. It was a bag belonging to a client. Anyway, and as I, as I got to the street, there was a policeman standing there. And um, I said to the policeman, oh, excuse me, somebody's just stolen something from my from my office. And the policeman turned to me and he said, uh, what do you expect me to do about it? <laughs> yeah. Um, hurrah. Right. That's my experience with the police. Just uh, um, one of my one of my experiences with the police. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, authorities. Thank you very much, UK government. Because the UK is now toast. Stick a fork in it. It's done. Um, the last 200 years of growth completely wiped out in three months. Um, and as if the people doing it didn't know this was going to happen, right? You think they didn't know? Do you think they couldn't work it out? Right? Do you think with all their education and all their experts, they couldn't work it out, right? Right. These people have an agenda. These people have a plan. It's not by accident. GDP fell by 20.4% in April, the largest monthly drop on record. If you're watching the video, <laughs> this is a, the most horrifying graph that you've ever seen. Um, yeah, and realize that when GDP drops, when production drops, when businesses close, when unemployment rises, your toast. The crime is going to go through the roof. Look, we're in, in Britain, we're a society that shows great resilience and has been able to generate itself, but um, it's done now, it's finished. Um, yes, a new society will be developed, but it's not what you think it's going to be. It's not what you think it's going to be. And I covered this, um, in fact, I'm covering this in a series of life coaching messages that are going out um, on my channel over the next week. So um, stay posted for those. But it's about the cultural regeneration, that's an Orwellian phrase, of our society uh, with all of these new normals, with all, of, all of these new patterns and trends coming in. Um, you've been warned, get out get out while you can right get out while you can because the doors are closing um oh yeah oh yeah straight down the graph goes straight down and they knew they knew they knew that because boris has tanked the economy on purpose <sighs> um he should have known better, but then he did know better. He knew what he was doing. Um, everything's gamed out in, in advance. Everything's war gamed out in advance. You think social media is not a war game? 
it's a war game and you are the target. Um, so collateral damage from the depression which is just beginning is going to be massive. Um, every here and there you get glimmers of light and good stories but in general it's, it's all bad. Um, there's a story about a local sign maker who's uh, making a small fortune because everybody needs new signs for their businesses and shops now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so a 20.4% contraction in, acti in activity in business in, in society is what you get if you close schools, tell people to stay at home and only shop for essentials. You close the restaurants, the bars, the theatres, the cinemas, the sports events, the music events. You shut down culture as we know it. From the moment the lockdown was announced at the end of March, it has been obvious the April growth figures from the Office for National Statistics would be a horror show. All that was at issue was whether the news would be bad, really bad, uh, calamitous, or so far off the scale that even the most hardcore pessimist had not envisioned it. In the end, it was merely calamitous. It goes without saying the April performance of the economy was the worst for a single month on record. The worst on record. The decline was three times as big as that in March, ten times as big as anything before C19. The economy was 25% smaller in April than in February. Almost two decades of growth had been wiped out in two months. That's a conservative estimate. The Office for National Statistics, Statistics da -da -da -da, has only been publishing data since 1997. Publishing data? Publishing, right? It's been collecting data forever. Way back to when the kings had their census of the country. What was that called? The Doomsday Book, I think? Something like that? Um, but there has been data going back a hundred years. There you go. It's hard to believe anything could have matched the first month. What did you think was going to happen? Right? Now you're powerless though, because you've got no money and you're poor and you're totally dependent on the government. Everyone is. A um, few people are pushing back. It's a good thing. Vatican Insider says, COVID is a colossal operation of social engineering, um, which is exactly what it is. Uh, this is from collectiveevolution.com. Sure, we might be witnessing in some sense a struggle between Donald Trump and the powers that wish to remove him from the presidency. Um, he will be, in effect, the last president. If things continue down the same road, he will be the last rightfully elected president of any Western country. Mark my words. Um, just like I was right about the infrastructure. And it's not me actually being right, it's me listening to other people who are right about things. Yeah, there we go. A massive campaign to do this began four years ago. Um, yeah, everything that Trump says is is, is ridicule. Every story. Every story and every media outlet has been negative. Every day. I mean, I mean it's a, it's a, it, that's a slight exaggeration, but only ever so slightly. Because it, it, it must be like 10,000 to 1. At least. It's just more than that, actually. It's crazy. It's true that politics is not making the world a better place right now, neither is the media. Politics is just about convincing everybody that you're better than somebody else and that you deserve great power. And with great power comes great responsibility. The truth is in Spider-Man. Um, politics and the way it's set up is not fit to handle nor tackle the issues our world faces today. It's a very poor means for change and system the human race seems to be growing out of and no longer resonating with. But that's the plan anyway. At the end of the day, uh, the writer believes that voting doesn't really make a difference but simply reinforces a system that you can no longer afford to even play with. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you vote for, every vote is a vote for the system. We can't continue do the same, doing the same thing every four years and expect change to come from just one 
person we can't constantly look to and rely to, a president, a prime minister, a leader to make any significant change in politics. Um, where, where are the religious leaders now? Huh? Huh? Government has one job to allow business to function regularly. They failed. Religion has one job to teach you about the tyranny of government. It has failed. School has one job to not get in the way in the education and development of children. It has failed. The media has one job to allow the free flow of um, truthful information. It has failed. At the end of the day, change has to come from us. It should be quite clear that it's not going to come from the leaders that we have at present. And thank you to uh, Betty Jo Hendrickson for actually uh, posting the uh, full original letter there. Uh, thank you. Um, yep, we live in we live in biblical times, right? We live in biblical times. Telegraph.co.uk reports the C19 death toll may be less than half of what has been recorded. Less than half. According to Professor Carl Sikora. Um, well, there you go. You know, the truth is between the lines somewhere. The C-19 death toll may be less than half of what has been recorded because many victims of the pandemic would have died soon anyway. Professor Carl Sikora is a senior oncologist who has built a huge Twitter following for his positive takes on the virus. Uh, he said that doctors are sometimes too eager to put C-19 on death certificates. Yes, because it's profit-based, isn't it? Uh, speaking to the Telegraph's Planet Normal podcast, which you can listen to, yada, 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 the professor said the virus would be mentioned on death certificates where there was any hint that it could have been the cause, even without proof, as well as retrospectively over the phone. Retrospectively altering the cause of death. That's a crime, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's a crime. This was in contrast to Germany, where a death toll can only be recorded as being caused by C-19 when a clinical team involved in end-of-life care certifies that is what they believe happened. Now, it, it's really important to understand that Britain changed uh, with the uh, coronavirus bill and guidelines. They changed who can actually sign off on death certificates and the reasons for death. And they, they changed it to just one authority person can do that. Just one authority person. That's the danger of authority. Too much power in the hands of too few people is always a bad thing. Um, you want some background on where, we're, where we are, where we're at? You want some background on how far how far away we are from where we were on how we've regressed. Go to youtube.com, watch BBC face to face. Watch the 1961 interview with Martin Luther King Jr. to understand how we have regressed as a society, how we have regressed as a, as a, as a race, as a, as a culture, as, as a people, as a planet. Um, mintpressnews.com reports the slippery slope to despotism is paved with lockdowns, raids and forced vaccinations. Look, one thing that you need to understand, if you take away one thing from this, take away the concept that democracy always leads to despotism. There's not been a democracy in history that hasn't been taken over at some point in time. Yes, but what do we do when tomorrow? Well, I don't know. You, you you think about it, you solve it, right? I don't have all the solutions. But I can tell you, if you look at history, every single democracy has led to some kind of despotic um, takeover. You know, whether it's been through, uh, uh, you know, false uprising of, of, of the people, you know, Bolshevikism, or Jacobitism, um, or... You know, history is history is interesting, right? History is interesting. It's well worth 
diving into some history books and seeing what you can learn um, about what happened. Seeing what you can learn about what happened. Seeing what you can understand while you can. Um, text reads, as the Declaration of Independence states, we are endowed by our Creator with certain un or inalienable rights to life, liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness that no government can take from us. Oops. Unfortunately, that hasn't stopped the government from constantly trying to usurp our freedoms at every turn. Indeed, the nature of government is such that it invariably oversteps its limits, abuses its authority, and flexes its totalitarian muscles. Take the C-19 crisis, for example. What started out as an apparent effort to prevent a novel virus from sickening the nation has become yet another means by which world governments can expand their powers, abuse their authority, and further oppress their constituents. Constituents, get it right. Until now, police state has been more circumspect in its power grabs, but the latest state of emergency has brought the beast out of the shadows. And think about how you feel when you see the police. Does it make you feel, feel good? Does it make you feel sick? When you see the police, doesn't make me feel safe. Doesn't make me feel any safer at all. It's a slippery slope, people. It's a slippery slope, like a wet slide in a kids' park, right? Right. And it's not helped by media just constantly pumping out. fake information across the board. It's not that, when I say fake information, I don't mean the information is not true. What I mean is it's irrelevant, basically. Um, <clears throat> Statistica.com reports number of people shot to death by police in the United States. Statistics 2017 to 2020 by race. Um, each year, largest number of people have been white, second largest black, third largest Hispanic, and then that's followed by other. You can you can go and check the statistics for yourself. Um, um, So-called police white on black crime questionable. Look, it it does happen, but then crime happens. Bad shit happens all the time, right? But the media only presents one side of it because. They want you to think a certain way. What about the journalists, you know? What's happened to journalism? Used to be investigative reporters, you know, going undercover and, you know, they, they helping society by shedding light on things that, things that were important. Now, now it, it's, it's, it's just one-sided garbage. Um, but they play the game intelligently because they, they, they do the, the, the major streams of media they, they'll print like 20 articles for one side then one article for the other side and then point to that one article for the other side and say oh look we did print something you know but nobody saw it um, not to mention the fact that they're rewriting history in real time on places like Wikipedia um, oh yeah, oh yeah, I keep an open mind though, keep an open mind, and be prepared to change your mind, right, oh you once had this opinion and now you've, now your opinion, you said that, and it's, well okay, can people change their minds, you have to, when you receive new information, you have to integrate it into what you know, see what it means, and if you're intelligent, you change your mind based on the facts. If you're intelligent, you change your mind based on the facts. Yeah. You've got to raise your game when becoming an adult, gaining responsibility, dealing with the media. You've got to raise your game. Raise your game enough to look past the control, see through the division. 
Watch the drama unfold from a safe distance. Don't get involved in problems that are not your problem. Don't get involved in fights that are not your fight. Because the, the media will have you burning your own home, chopping down your own trees, right? People don't understand. They don't understand the power of the media because they don't understand the power of themselves in what is going on. Because they don't understand themselves. Men are actuated by motives that they conceal from themselves. It's so true. And as a result are heavily influenced by the uncritical righteousness of any group to which they belong. They never criticize the power of the group. Ever present, all strong. Bernays, Edward Bernays wrote, if one can design propaganda or psychological operations that bypass the conscious and rational faculties of the individual, targeting instead suppressed emotions and hidden desires, see Freud for example, it is possible to move people to adopt beliefs and behaviours without them being aware of the underlying motivations leading them on. Oh yeah. People are very unaware of their own motivations. They're unaware of the own, their own need to change. To realize that to, to make a difference you have to be prepared to be different and not fearful. You know, ask yourself some important questions. What will, what will you change today? in your world? What will you change today in your life? You want some background information about Edward Bernays? Check out youtube.com. Edward Bernays and group psychology manipulating the masses. Um, I think that's from the Academy of Ideas. Um, great site. Great site. Wish I'd started that one. Great site. Um, but we all do what we can where we are. And change takes time. Don't expect too much too soon. It takes 18 years to become 18. It takes a lifetime to learn a lifetime's skills. Play the long game. And if you play the long game, you can take little risks here and there. You can understand. You can begin to understand history. I've seen a, quite a few videos of uh, people protecting their own towns in the United States right now. Um, you can only protect it if you've got guns. And so local people with guns standing on the corners of the streets, allowing people to go about their daily lives and business. That is freedom. That's the responsibility of freedom. People don't want the responsibility that comes with freedom. And that's a problem. That's a problem. Everyone's scared. Everyone's fearful. They call it the nanny state. The nanny society. Check out Marjorie Green's message to Antifa. Stay the hell out of Northwest Georgia. Check that out online. Very interesting. Short. Short and sweet. Meanwhile, Project Veritas are doing real reporting. Um, still on Twitter.com for now. Um, Check out their videos of the Antifa hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Um, is this for defense or attack? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, meanwhile, the, um, the insane culture of our planet continues. Um, you don't just need to wear a mask while you're on public transport and riding your bike. You can now wear special water masks in the swimming pool. <laughs> now, hey, traditionally swimming pools were places where diseases were anyway, right? So, um, not that the swimming pools couldn't do with a good deep clean, but you definitely don't need to wear a mask when you're there. You know, I saw some videos of uh, uh, swimming pools built in the 
in Britain in the, I don't know, when was it? Like the, just after the Second World War, right? And they were better quality than a lot of the swimming pools built recently. How is that even possible, right? This is, on a, this is an unhealthy state. This is a very unhealthy state. What about the kids? Kids need to go swimming. Open the pools. Let them go swimming. Come on. Is it too much to ask? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just too much to ask. Um, especially in the new normal that we have to experience. You can take your new normal and you can put it where the sun doesn't shine as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm old school and I don't apologize for it. Um, how are you going to cope? Are you going to be happy? You're going to be happy in a world where your children are taught by teachers in masks that tell kids to stay six feet away from their peers at all times? Are you, going to happy, are you going to be happy in a world where you shuffle one way around a supermarket all the while keeping your distance from everybody else? Meanwhile, if you look behind the scenes in the warehouses, <laughs> it's a different world, right? Are you going to be happy in a world where an elderly woman drops down and unconscious in front of you? Maybe because she's wearing a mask and she can't breathe? Are we, um, oh yeah, th there's the, the, the new first aid guidelines from St. John's, St. John's Ambulance. New first aid guidelines are to put a towel over the face of a person who has collapsed unconscious. Well done, well done, well done. That's like, it just, could, you couldn't, you, you, why not just throw bricks at people? Um. going to be happy? You're going to be happy with all this? You're going to be happy with all your, all the money that you make despite the fact that you're sick and you're ill from a degenerate culture of fast food, and fast love, and just generally, general insane fastness where as I said earlier, we use once, throw away, and just move on without thinking about the consequences. Hmm. Yeah, are you going to be happy when you're, you're caught outside of your safe zone and get an instant fine? Are you going to be happy when you're caught without your mask in public? Yeah. Does masks just turn everybody into criminals and give criminals free reign, right? But don't worry, don't worry about getting a fine because they'll just instantly deduct it from your digital currency account like the police did with me when I got caught speeding mm. Mm. at two o'clock in the morning on an open road in the middle of the highlands. Mm. Right. And I think like I was speeding by about like five miles an hour or something. Um, and it was dark and you couldn't see the signs much madness. But don't worry, the authorities have got everything under control. They shut down schools and sea travel and air travel and um, of course this is, of course the virus has got nothing to do with the solar cycles, right? It's got nothing to do with the cycles of energy coming from the sun, right? The cycles of nature, right? Right? Hmm. Right. And the world caught a cold and died. Are you going to be happy with that, that story? Yeah? Are you going to be happy with that? Meanwhile, all the media is a distraction to make, you, to make sure that you don't read uh, a newspost.com's articles like genetically modified mosquitoes cleared for release in the US. A company called Oxitec has received an experimental use permit. They're going to experiment on the people now. Hoorah. 
Well, they don't even need vaccinations because they're going to put all that shit in mosquitoes and they're just going to bite you anyway. Um, or burrow into you or something. I had a tick in my leg the other day. I had to pull it out. It was a very unpleasant experience. Shit happens. Get used to it. Scientists hope that these genetically modified mosquitoes can help eliminate diseases uh -huh -huh, or spread them. Uh -huh. The plan is that these genetically modified male mosquitoes will mate. Or, yeah, this is the point. Th think about this. The plan is that these genetically modified male mosquitoes will mate with wild females and their genetics will cause the children to die. The plan is that these genetically modified male mosquitoes will mate with wild females and their genetics will cause the children to die. And should also cause a collapse of the wild population. Of the wild population. Mm -hmm. However, there is growing concern among scientists that this technology may not be ready for development and that the risks have not been studied thoroughly enough. Many scientists are warning about the potential unintended consequences ah, ha, 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 right, that can come from unleashing, unleashing such, wow, such insects into the wild. Yes, man playing God never works. For example, researchers are entirely unaware of what type of allergic reactions that these insects could cause if they interact with people. The same allergic reactions that are in people where, where now we can now die if we eat peanuts because peanuts are used in the vaccine cultivation process, right? Crazy stuff, right? Crazy stuff. But don't worry if you do get sick, as I mentioned earlier, you know, St. John's Ambulance and their uh, instructions will, uh, will save your life because putting a towel over someone's face when they've got breathing problems is just just a top thing to do, right? And if you're watching the video of the presentation, you can see the actual um, official manual and guidelines. Uh, virtual insanity is our reality. Um, still, there's a few people cutting through the cheese and spitting out the truth. Check out Lord Jamar. Um, on youtube.com saying I don't support Black Lives Matter because it's not our movement and it's true and it's true um, there you go <sighs> there you go um, I like Facebook's um, memories section I find it very interesting to see what I was doing on this day in previous years um, um, one of the things I discovered is this, this this quote. I'm going to finish with this quote today from uh, Stephen Donovan, who is the man. Who and this this is this is this is old. This is like seven eight years old. But just think about how relevant this is. Think about how the truth remains true. The worst thing about the education system is simply that those who can best repeat what they are told in exactly the same manner that they are told are deemed the smartest. Those who ask questions or challenge the narrative are deemed disruptive troublemakers or not respecting authority. Hence you have a system where the nation's best scriveners, the nation's best Parrots, the nation's best secretaries, get rewarded by gaining admission to the best universities with a lifelong stamp of approval without the slightest indication that they can actually criticize, challenge and process the bullshit that might have been poured into their ears and oozes out of their mouths from their typing fingers or writing hands. It's all a scam. And that's the truth, right? We've been lied to for generations. It's time to make a change. It's time to make a difference. It's time to seek your truth without imposing it on others. 
My name is G. I represent the Academy. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have, share. If you care, whatever, right? Whatever. If you want to reach out and connect, it's Graham William Henry on Facebook. There's uh, five pages on Facebook. You can check out Twitter, Instagram, the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching on YouTube. I'm also on LinkedIn as well, which is a very one-dimensional and idiotic platform where people are celebrating the fact that business is collapsing. As John Lennon said, it's an insane world and when you point out it's insane, people point their finger at you and say you are insane. Wherever you are, I wish you a great day. I wish you a grand experience and as always, don't forget to tell the ones you love that you love them. Take care.